So, you know, it is what it is at this point. You know, we're, we're here. It's the end of June, the final video of the month of June. And another week in indoor football has passed. So, you probably already figured out something has happened today on this Monday. And, well, certain things happened. Certain things happened, and, you know, you see the scores? West Texas put up a good fight against San Antonio, but lost by two touchdowns, 6-9-55. San Antonio has clinched the playoff spot. Jacksonville has also clinched the playoff spot, but for another reason, they beat Carolina in one of the weirdest games I think I've seen in quite some time. We're talking Jason Gibson, you know, uh, might have... Probably 95% likely he interfered in a catch, or at least in a play, late in the second quarter. And then, you know, the ref, late stages of the game, there was a whole penalty in which, you know, Carolina could not kick a deuce, so they had to go for an onside kick. The ref apparently did not know what in the world was going on at first, but he figured it out. He figured it out. So, yeah, you see there's five. Wait, wait you're counting. You're seeing, wait, wait, why are there five? Why do you have five teams listed in the standings? Wait, but what's going on here, big boy? What's going on here? Well, the Week 12 schedule got adjusted due to Albany's demise. And my first impression with this Week 12 schedule of West Texas, San Antonio, and Carolina Jacksonville was, hey, what's wrong? Is Fayetteville going to play? You know, Fayetteville's supposed to play, you know, Maybe could have played Orlando this week. We're supposed to have a home game. But the issue that played Fayetteville, the issue that's been plaguing them all season long, was just a multitude of factors. You know, they Fayetteville is done. They are, their season is done. You know, their season is done. Financial difficulties. You know, it's... The way they could not draw fans to a, into the crowd center, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't draw anybody there. They couldn't draw a thousand people there at least. You know, they were constantly, constantly trying to get new, you know, people on board to try and get, you know, on the team to own at least part of the team because, you know, the guy who owned it, you know, just could not do it by himself. You know, it was very, it was becoming very, very apparent because, you know, Fayetteville kept coming out with these releases. And we were talking about them earlier in the season, you know, how, you know, certain NAL teams were looking for more owners. Carolina was also another example, you know. So Fayetteville will not finish. So that means Jacksonville is in regardless. And regardless, you know, Jacksonville probably would have been in the playoffs anyway. And so now the full revised schedule has been released. Jacksonville will play 13 games now. They will have four games left. San Antonio and Orlando, they have, they have you know, the same amount of games at 12. Carolina, West Texas will play 14. So Carolina has will not get any more weeks off. They'll be the ones playing for the rest of the season, everybody else will get at least one bye. So Carolina's playing. Jacksonville will keep their seven home games like they usually do. Everybody else, it is what it is. You know, standings is just obviously going to have to be adjusted, you know, based on percentages like that. But since we're down to five teams, you know, four teams will make it to the NAL playoffs. There's just no way that the structure could be changed now unless, you know, we get – Unless something even crazier happens. But, you know, it's been a rough past month, really, for the NAL. You know, just, just a rough time. We'll talk more about Albany in a minute. But, uh, yeah, it's been a rough time. Um, in the IFL, you know, things are looking pretty much the same. You know, I mean, Vegas is done because they had a lead against Duke City. And then Duke City decided to put up 51 straight on them. You know, 
Arizona clinched the playoff spot by beating San Diego in a tough game. Um, Frisco has a home playoff game. They will host a home playoff game. Massachusetts beat Tulsa. They will host a home playoff game. Or rather, they will at least go to the playoffs. We don't know if they'll host a playoff game yet. Uh, Bay Area, by virtue of, you know, basically everything else, you know, they clinched the playoff spot regardless of them losing without Dalton Sneed. They lost with no Dalton Sneed. Slight issue. Frisco's still struggling. They're 11-2, and two, though, but they're still a struggling Frisco team that hasn't been able to, you know, you know, keep keep you know keep things you know to where they are supposedly the dominant team in the IFL, but they do not look like that right now. The Arizona Rattlers do, and you know, it, I mean, Arizona's been really on win after win. Massachusetts and Arizona will hook up this week on what July the second. They'll hook up on no July. The, yeah, I think it's July the first. Or is this, that was the second. It's that Sunday. So, you know, those two teams will hook up the top. It's going to be a big-time matchup there. And we're going to have lots of good matchups. As the season is coming to a close in the IFL. You know, regular season almost over. Most teams have two or three games left. So, you know, it is what it is. We have four playoff teams locked up. And for the most part... Quad City might as well, you know, go ahead and maybe lock them in. Sioux Falls, Marine Bay are really battling. Quad City's kind of faltering, though. But, hey, they bounce back against Iowa, so that's good for them. Um, in the AWFC, it'll be the Boise. You know, I mean, not not Boise. I meant Idaho. The Idaho Horsemen. I, I, why did I say Boise? I meant this, maybe it's because I got them confused with the Boise State Broncos. But, yeah, it'll be the Idaho Horsemen taking on the Oregon High Desert Storm on July 1st for the fourth AWFC Championship as Oregon beat Wenatchee yet again, 69-57. So Idaho, Oregon in the AWFC Bowl number four. In the AIFA, the Capital City Cyclones actually showed up. They got beat 75-27. Columbus, by virtue of you know just beating everybody that – you know, was able to be beaten in the AIFA, you know. They finished 6-0 in the regular season. And instead of hosting Mississippi, they will host the AIFA championship on July 15th instead. So, fantabulous season for Columbus, you know, really good for them. It, it It's something, it's some decently good exposure for the AIFA by virtue of Columbus, you know, dropping down. But for the most part, the same issues that I've had with this league continue to they, they continue to be a thing, you know. Now, apparently, based off the press release from Columbus, Mississippi will host somebody in the semifinal at some point. Who knows when, because I don't even know. Um, that the winner of that game will play Columbus. Mississippi is the only team to have won a game, but both of those were against the Alabama Renegades. The other game I can't find, but we do know the first one that Mississippi played against the Renegades. And most teams have yet again played only one to three games. The Dallas Falcons said, "No, nah, we're not doing this no more." You know, a couple weeks ago, um, we're not playing. Any more games this season? We said we said Columbus, and that's it. Uh, you know, Mississippi, the the dumbest type of posts I've been seeing from them. Like this is not like we need professional. You, you're supposed to be a professional football team. Post something about football, please. Not about your sponsors. That you know, again, don't have games to show up to because I don't think Mississippi even has any turf. At least not any turf that's actually good. Um, you know, the Vegas Kings, you know, they, they may be playing Capital City in Arizona in a game on July 22nd, but who cares about that? That's going to be after the AIFA championship. So that's kind of pointless to play that game, you know, after the championship. Kind of pointless to play that. So, you know, the same issues remain, you know, with the AIFA. Same, same old stuff 
with this leak. I really hope it dies. I, 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 I want it to die. I, I cannot stand, you know, this bottle that it like, this is, this is, this is truly the AAL on another level. We'll talk about the AL too again in a moment, or rather not not in a moment, but you know in like a couple weeks because I, I just don't have the energy to talk about the AL too because it's hard to track right now. And then the Albany Empire. Well, there could be a new team in Albany next year. They could play the IFL. They could play the NAL. This team could be led by Ron Tronico. You know. There could be. He, 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 we don't know. We don't know. The the owner of the MVP arena says he wants a new team. He's suing AB. The players are suing AB because, you know, they didn't get their money. Plain and simple. AB did not pay the players like he was supposed to for the final game against Orlando, which was an absolute train wreck. So the players are going to sue. MVP arena wants to sue AB. There's like missing equipment as well, and then there's just other various things that are just going on in Albany that you know are just simply unexplainable because you know it's the way AB and company have done it. And so, for me, for me, when it comes to the NAL, when it comes to the NAL, I like the NAL. I, I've said how good they are with their resiliency. But there, there, there just comes a point. There comes a point, you know, where you have to look up and say, hey, we got to do something. We got to do something that's actually going to, you know, benefit. The AFL hasn't said anything like 60 days, so who cares? Who cares what they say? Um, we'll talk about you know, the Arena League, Tim Brown's version anyway, not the fake one that died off. You know, we'll talk about that in the future because I continue to forget about them. But the NAL stuck at five teams, and it and it's, and it wasn't just AB and Albany. They, you know, and I know people are going to, people have been blaming, you, you know the guys, you know the guys who are, I, I have beef with them now. I have beef with the guys that are blaming Chris Siegfried for all this. Like, again, Chris said he does not, you know, he does, you know, some day-to-day type stuff, but he does not, you know, own the league like that. He he serves the owners. The owners are the ones who do this. The owners are the ones, you know, helping out, getting, the, you know, getting these other teams in, you know. So, like, Chris does the best he can. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's up to these teams to get themselves rolling, you know. And with the way, you know, pe- people were, you know, I had, you know, the Urine 80 Tree released the video on AB and Albany. And, I mean, I-, I said some things in the comment section, you know, and I'm hoping, and it looks, and it looks like, you know, traffic is coming up for the channel, at least, in regards to that. So, you know, that's good there, but at the same time, it's bringing awareness to this Albany team that, you know, wasn't the same team that was drawing, you know, like 10,000 fans. Like this this Albany team, let's just face facts. We have to face reality. I'm I'm not being cynical, I'm not being negative. I'm saying, look, this is what we have. Like you Go to the inside the walls of Discord. My boy Jim has the attendance numbers right there for Albany. That team was not drawing the way it was drawing. Two to three K fans a game. Not gonna cut it. A B, you know, only the team just kind of amplified the apathy in which, you know, people really didn't care. Or at least they cared. But in a superficial way, because, you know, people are like, oh, we had a team in Albany. Oh, I'm so sad that they're gone. Like, did you even go to their games? Did you did you do anything? Did, did you know, it's a whole it's a whole trickle down process in regards to everything with Albany. 
at Fayetteville, same thing. This was a market that had proven to fail in the past. And yet, a team got there anyway. A team got in the Fayetteville yet again anyway. And you're thinking, oh, okay, well, I mean, like six, 700 for that first game. Oh, okay, that's, that's pretty bad, but maybe they can improve it. And then you keep looking and you keep going. And it's like, oh, this isn't going to work. Yeah. So there was no way. I didn't, th- I didn't think Fayetteville was going to last anyway. Unless they got somebody that could actually do something for the team. But clearly, it, it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough for Fayetteville. So now... Nail's in an even worse position in the CIF. And I joked about this. I joked about it. But the Topeka Tropics, who had, you know, absolute horrific trouble at, towards the end of the season. At least they won a game, went into the offseason with some momentum. They survived. Two NAL teams have died in the span of 10 days. And I, I just, I just, I just don't know at this point. Like, wow, crazy. I'm just a small YouTube. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't do this for money yet. But I mean, come on. There has to be, there has to be a point to something. The NAL has to do something positive at some point. I believe they will. The negative naysayers, you know, you know the guy who runs the Indoor Football Insiders, you know, page and, and and the Beyond the Walls page. By the way, I don't think that's Todd Mintz anymore. By the way, I don't, I don't think that's Todd. I think that's a different guy. He was getting all up on, you know. Columbus's owner in, in the chat for the Jacksonville Carolina game tonight. They were went back and forth, which was quite hilarious. Uh, but you know, there's options for the NAL out there, but it's gonna it's gonna have to take a lot of time and process and stuff like that, like it usually does. They have to be a hundred percent committed to the process this time, otherwise. We're going to have another situation like this. You don't want a situation like this. This is, I think this is like, what, 2017 levels? Oh, yeah, we're going way back. We're going way back. I wasn't even in, I wasn't even talking about the NAL then because I didn't even have a YouTube by then. See, we're talking, this is this is 2017 level type stuff. You know, like it was rough. It was rough back then. And, this right here is just a different level of rough. Like, I don't know. I don't know, y'all. That's all I got to say. I'll see you all next Sunday at about 8 o'clock or so to talk more of the sport I love so much. I love this game, even though it's a headache to cover. Man. 